Hey everyone, it's me, Travis. I've traveled back in time to make my parents fall in love. I mean, uh, to, I'm here to fix some codes, but I'm still time traveling. No, really, look at this beard. Crazy, huh? Consider this video 3.5 in this current series. For those of you watching this series week by week, you're going to be like, what is he talking about now? But for those of you tuning in for the first time and watching the playlist in order, you're going to be like, whoa, look at that beard. He can time travel. It's come to my attention that I made a, a mistake early on in this project. And it's a subtle one. And so it makes sense now that I look back on it, how this mistake occurred. And this is how it happened. Number one, I showed you how to make a site using Jekyll, but I used the Jekyll new command to show you how to do that. Number two, when I set up this project in video number four, I already had a lot of the site structure already completed, but I did not show you how or why I set up my folder structure this way, and thus I broke the axle of time. But I'm here to fix that. That's what we're going to do right now. I've created something I call the Dev Tips Starter Kit. Here we have just a very, very basic index.html, and we link to the essential files like my main.css, um, including jQuery2, and uh, I have a, a, a script page set up called functions.js. Also, I have it set to where it's going to be a responsive uh, website by default, uh, saying that the device is the uh, device width. And we have a favicon uh, link set up already. Now you can put the title in there and, and just start coding right here. Now let me show you how this folder structure is set up. As you can imagine, images is empty because there's no images in this starter kit. And the JavaScript folder here has the jQuery that I talked about and functions is ready. Functions has a document ready statement saying that after the document or the DOM has loaded, we're going to begin executing any functions that we have here. Now we've never talked about this in dev tips yet, but it's ready for us and we're going to be talking about it soon, in fact, on our artist theme. But that's way in the future, remember? Here we are in the CSS. Now this is probably what I skipped over the most and I'm here to fix it. So we have two main ideas here. Number one, we have a bunch of isolated folders that will help us to kind of keep our code really clean and separate and easy to find what we're looking for. And then we finally have the main.sass. Now I think we called this all.sass in our artist theme, but it's the same concept. In this main.sass, we're importing uh, the index for each one of these uh, folders. See, they all have an index. Now this index is an important page because what it does is import everything else in the page. Now, when the index imports everything in the page and then the main imports every index and this all compiles down to one single CSS file which is exactly what we want. We want the browser to only ever have to call one CSS file from our server thus cutting down significantly on page load time. Now the folders that I have here uh, we will start in the beginning tools. In tools I put all of the kind of CSS and all the libraries that I'm not going to be touching generally. So I have normalize here which will give me kind of just the standard you know browser resets that are that are really important for every web project. I have here um, bourbon which is important uh, it's an important SAS mix-in library for me. I, I use it all the time and what I really like about bourbon is that it's they're just mix-ins they they are not pre-compiled code. If you run bourbon right like we're compiling our SAS None of, this is none of Bourbon, right? Like Bourbon didn't prescribe us to have any output. So if you include Bourbon into a project but never use any of those mix-ins, it will equate to, to not having Bourbon in your project at all. If you don't use it, it equates to nothing and there's no problem in just leaving it there. So I include it in every project and I use it when I need it. It's, it's really great to have. Um, I've made a whole series about bourbon. You guys know how I feel about bourbon. I love bourbon. Also, I have here the last in uh, the last import is the fonts. Now, this will change from time to time, but generally, once you have your fonts set up for the project, it's not going to change. And here, I'm I'm just showing you how I imported the Google font face, uh, the Google font Open Sans as the font face. So it's going to be the default to the projects. Now, after I have the tools, I'm going to have the base. There's a base index which includes first the vars. The vars are the variables 
And right now I just have a bunch of colors set up here, like the primary color, what is the text going to be, the accent color, the background, links, selections, you know, like when you highlight things with your mouse. So all of these are set here, and you can add tons and tons and tons of variables to this as your project grows, and you use these variables throughout. And then in base, this is the first time that we're actually writing CSS that's going to output in, uh, in our project. So I have typography presets, uh, talking about headline statements, um, paragraphs, and different typographic elements. And then I have the links, setting the link color and selections, and then some basic body um, styles, including setting the font family for the project and the background color and that type of thing. Cool, so that's the base. Now the modules, mod I have nothing in the index yet. I have nothing here. Modules are gonna be very, very project specific thing. They're gonna be like, what does the header look like? Or what does a contact form look like? What does a, um, you know, what does a, 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 a pop-up modal look like? Or, or what does a confirm message or an alert look like? These are all gonna be very contextual to the projects. So I've set up the folders, but I haven't done anything in it. And if you, don't ever put anything in it and use this thing, it's still fine because there's nothing in the modules index, it's still compiling to zero. So it's not gonna take up space, it's, it's gonna be fine. And the same goes with pages. That's the next subfolder here. So this is where you're gonna put your styles that are specific to the about a page, right, of your website, or the contact page, or the features page of, of your product, or the, um, you know, the home page are going to have very specific styles to that page, not their modules, but the page itself, like the structure and layout. Now that's going to go here in the pages uh, area. Sometimes I call it layouts. I think actually in the, now that I'm thinking about it, in the uh, artist theme, we don't have, because it's just one page, so I have this being called sections is basically the same concept again. So the naming is a slightly different, but the concepts are still there. This is this is how I do it. Okay, this has been a tour of the Dev Tip Starter Kit. I'm gonna upload this onto GitHub so you can download it and kind of follow along as we build out the artist theme project that you're currently watching. This is a you know an interjected kind of episode in that series. Or you can download it and use it for whatever you like. It doesn't matter. It's a good starting point um, in general for making uh, small websites. So that's up on GitHub for you to download right now. But before we're done with this video, I want to show you a few tips on how to use it. Okay. So the first thing is you'll notice that in the index.html, all of these links have a, 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 a slash before the word asset. This means Every time that the asset is called, it's going to start at the root directory and then work its way back. Even if you're in a sub page, like if you're like this is the index right now, but if it's like slash team or company and then that index, you can still do slash assets because it'll jump back to the root and then find the main.css. In order to use it, you have to be using a server, right? Like a web server. So you can FTP this up to your server and that will work just fine. But to do it locally, you have to run a local server. Okay. Now one really quick and easy way to do that is to use this application, which is a free download called Prepros. It works for both Mac and Windows. And the, vi and the, the free version has a server built into it. Uh, um, so when you do load this project into that server, it will start up a, a blank web page and it will be hosting. So these root calls to the CSS, to the JavaScript, to you know all your images and stuff, those will all work properly. If you download this dev tip starter kit and then try to uh, open the index.html right there, it won't work. The links will all be broken. Okay, It's important that you have a server running. And there's a few different ways, but this is probably one of the easier ones, especially if you don't want to touch the command line right just yet. Also, another really easy way is to use Jekyll like I showed you in the last episode. right? Where That's what we're doing with the, um, the artist theme, and it works out just great. But right now, I'm going to show you with Prepros. So I have my uh, dev tip starter kit, and I have Prepros open here. I'm going to drag my project onto the Prepros window and it's going to just launch a project right here. All I have to do is go down this little globe right here and then it will open this project in a new window. So let me show you that I'm going to inspect the element here and then open the, for example, the head and you can see that this is the HTML um, 
file that I'm looking at over here. In fact, let's just say um, See how that pops up? One well, another another nice benefit from Prepros is that it does uh, live refreshing or auto refreshing. So on every save, it's just going to update your HTML page without you having to switch to it and press refresh. So that's quite nice. But it's just a, it's just an added benefit. The real uh, the real feature that we're looking for is the server here. So um, <clears throat> let me show you that the server is working and then the assets are included. So I'm going to go over here to the resources, frames, local host, and I'm going to check that my scripts are all here. That's my that's my functions. That's my jQuery and my style sheet. That's my main. So it's all working. You can see that the style is all there and this is how you do it. So again, just to cover all the all the touch points, it's on GitHub. You can download it using the link in the description below. And also it's um, you have to be using a server and I recommend using a server every time you code locally. Uh, even if it's a, a Jekyll server, if it's a pre-pro server, if it's a HTTP simple server uh, using using Python. Uh, I'm going back to the future, guys. This is it. I'm out. Thanks for watching, and uh, you know, leave a comment if you have any questions. I know this is weird that I'm like making. Why am I making 3.5 video when we're on like episode number 10 in the future? But I just wanted to show off my beard to the people in the past, which is you know, you guys watching this for the first time. Anyway, much love. Take it easy. Talk to you soon. Watch the next video. I don't know. Bye.